Okay, it's time for a bit of a product review. This parcel has come in the post today. I think I know what's inside of here. Let's open it up and have a look. Right, it is a cool baby, 8-bit, 2.5 LCD game machine. So, let's have a look. It's a really nice box, this. I bought this from Wish.com. I paid, I can't remember exactly how much, I think it was about 11 or 12 pounds. I'll put the real price on the screen right now, and I'll put a link in the video description in case you're interested in following that and having a look at it on Wish.com. So, let's have a look. It's got just pictures of the product on there, some tiny little writing on that side. Uh, digital game system, the console is slim, portable and trendy. Digital multi-platform device can play on TV. The backlit function of the screen ensures players can play everywhere. With powerful rechargeable battery pack, includes an AC adapter and a lithium ion rechargeable battery. Two to three hours of continuous gameplay. So, that's enough waffle. Let's open it up and have a look. So, I'm sure you'll recognise the styling because it's kind of based on, obviously, the old Game Boy. So there we go, we've got, uh, it says it has an AC adapter, but it doesn't, but it, however it's got a USB plug, that is micro USB, and it charges on the bottom there. I presume that's a jack plug for audio, or for, oh no, that's going to be a jack plug for plugging into the TV, I imagine. And then we've got on-off switch at the top, volume control on the right-hand side, and that's about it. And then in the back here, there is a rather difficult to open battery hatch containing a little lithium ion cell, a bit like a phone battery actually, a bit like a battery for one of those old fashioned flip phones. Now, I believe this is going to be another one of these little game things that emulates a Famicom or NES. So that's what I'm expecting to find here, but I'm hoping that unlike the last one of these handheld things I got, the emulation might actually be in some way usable. Let's switch it on. I guess that's the only way to find out. Let's switch it on and find out. Okay, maybe it needs charge. Okay, I'm going to try charging it up and see what happens when it's had a couple of hours of charge. But just before we do, these buttons feel like they're pretty good quality, actually for a device of this price, these don't feel too bad at all. Actually, I think that might be usable. We will see when we come to try playing the thing, of course. So, looking promising so far, let's charge it up and then we'll have a play. Okay, well I actually couldn't wait, so I've just plugged the USB into my laptop so that we can charge it. Before we start though, let's just have a look at the manual quickly. So there's a manual that's in Chinese and in English. It's not going to tell us very much. It's got cleaning tips, it's got battery usage, don't put it in the fire. Um, yeah, we don't need to read any of that really. It's not going to tell us anything useful. So, let's plug it in and see if we can run it while it's actually on charge. Okay, a light has come on. That's a promising sign. We've got a little blue and red LED just on the side there. Quite a funky little 8-bit tune there. We'll choose English. Okay, that... It's good, it's got good control on the... Good control of the sound there, that's good. Let's have a look then, so... I think we're going to go for, well, let's try Super Mario Brothers. That's the one that was iffy on some of the other consoles. Still can't seem to select one or two player game. Oh, yes, we can by pressing select on this console. So that implementation is working. Anyway, let's go for a one player game.
Well, this has got the opposite problem that the other one had. This one sounds like it's playing too fast. However, it is still quite playable. Okay, let's just uh, go back out to the menu. It's a bit annoying that it goes back to the language selection every time. I wonder if there's a way you can set it to keep that persistently. I'm going to turn the sound down because it's annoying. Let's see if we can find a shoot 'em up. What I really want is Galaxian or Gallagher. Well, that's a bit of a disappointment. It doesn't have Galaxian or Gallagher on there as far as I can see. Uh, they are in, in kind of almost alphabetical order, but not quite. Well, let's try Astromax. Hmm, some sort of weird platformer, I guess. Yeah, not my cup of tea, that one. Uh, what I really want to find is a shoot 'em up, but I don't know what half of these games are. So we're just going to have to play around. Okay. Kind of a bit of an easy shoot em up that one, I guess. Oh, I'm not doing very well on it though. Okay. Okay. So, quality of the thing, pretty good I'd say. I'm not sure the emulation is exactly spot on for all of the games on there. A little bit disappointed that it seems mostly platformers and there's no shoot em ups and traditional arcade games that I could find on there. But actually, I think that's probably not too bad. For, if you like these sorts of games, I'll put a full list of all of the games that are on there in the video description. If you like those sorts of games, this is quite a fun little device and it's it's got a proper retro feel to it in many ways, not just because it resembles a Game Boy, but this whole 8-bit tunes vibe is pretty cool. The controls the buttons themselves, it's a little bit cramped, but the quality of the buttons is more than adequate, I would say, for a device of this level. Obviously, you've got to make allowances. This was a bit cheap, and it doesn't feel that cheap. So, all in all, I think that's not bad. But uh, anyway, for now, that's, I'd say that's not a bad little widget, and probably worth the money, especially if the games that you like are on there. So, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.